This is Tileman, and he is currently trapped inside a single cell, and the only way for him to move is to kill zombies. And in order for me to find food and supplies, that's exactly what I was going to need to do. And before I knew it, the dead were at the door. I took care of the first, the second, and the third. After killing those zombies, I used my tiles to get to the cupboards, which were stocked with food, but most importantly, the sink, which was going to be our only source of fresh water. My next goal was to get to the TV, because I could use the TV to cure my boredom and also use it to get some nice skill levels. But, in order to do that, it meant we had to kill more zombies. So I made it to the TV, and I even managed to catch my favourite show, Woodcraft. Now the only thing on my mind was to get upstairs and find a safe place to sleep for tonight. After killing those zombies, I eventually made it upstairs, but I made a vital error. If you get to the top of the stairs and you don't have any spare tiles, then you will not be able to get back down the stairs. You need one extra tile to go back down the stairs, even though you unlocked them on the way up. So, if you do this challenge yourself, make sure you don't make the same mistake. So, I guess the only thing to do is stand at the top of the stairs, screaming for the heavens, and hope that a zombie comes in to let me go back downstairs. I had killed a few zombies now and the amount of zombies in the area that could hear me from inside the house when I was shouting was getting less and less. So I decided to venture out of the house, out into the street, to see if I could attract more zombies by shouting whilst outside. Needless to say, my plan worked. And not only could I attract more zombies from outside now, I could actually plan for the future and see where I want to take this. Looking around I could see a few houses that were similar to mine, so I knew that immediately food wasn't going to be a big issue. But little did I know, I had my sights set on something much bigger. I had been up all night killing zombies, and Tail Man was starting to feel a little bit tired. So after watching an episode of the cooking show, I decided it was time to go to bed. I started off the next day by killing some unwanted guests, and eventually I reached the end of my tether with a banging sound next door, so we had to go and take care of it. I spent the majority of the next day just killing some of the zombies in the area and I also wanted to expand towards the junction as I thought that I could use it to attract zombies from all areas and the next thing that I wanted to do was just kind of sure up my food supply, make sure I've got enough. So I expanded into the house next door and I was pretty happy with what I found. Those beans mean that we could make soup because we have the large cooking pot and yeah, we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna be good for food for a while. During this playthrough, I had the zombies on insane, right? I had them on insane population. Now, for some reason in my area, it doesn't seem like there's an awful lot of zombies for me to deal with. It does, you know, there can be a few at times when a, a horde wanders into the area, but for the most part, they're really just not that many. So, when I was standing out on the road, I seen that there was this really tall metal fence, and on the other side of it were a few zombies, and I also noticed that any time that I looked over there, there were a lot of zombies behind the houses and, you know, kind of far away, out of range of my shout anyway. So I wanted to go up there as I feel like I could attract way more zombies from up there and take them down to my area to kill them. So after coming up with that plan, I decided to go back to doing what I do best and for the most part, it was fairly routine. But as you're about to see, we had a bit of a close call. Yeah, that was a lot closer than I would have liked. As soon as I finished killing the zombies, I checked my wounds, and luckily for us, it was only scratches. Scratches have a 7% chance to cause zombification, lacerations have a 25% chance, and a bite, as you know, is a 100% chance. 
After that close encounter, I sat around for a little bit healing up and then I decided that I wanted to get to this car. I didn't know what I could use it for, I knew that I wouldn't be driving it, but I did want to check what loot would be in the trunk, and little did I know, this car was actually going to be very, very useful in future. In the trunk of the car there was a gas can. Now, of course, as I said before, I wouldn't be driving this car, and the, the car actually in itself ended up not having any gas in it, but... I knew that this was going to be useful if I wanted to craft molotovs or maybe I found a generator, you never know. So I decided to leave it in the car for the time being as I didn't really have a use for it just yet. After a pretty hectic but productive day, I decided it was time to head to bed. The next day I continued my journey up towards the big fence and after seeing this, I was sure that I was right. I was going to be able to attract way more zombies from up here than down at my house. I had killed a few zombies at this point, but if I wanted to make any real progress, I needed to ramp up the amount of zombies I was going to be killing. And if you remember me saying earlier this car was going to come in handy, well here you go. After letting off the car alarm, I had no idea how many zombies it was going to bring in, so I decided to run back to my house quickly and grab my fridge which I could put in front of my front door, meaning I could get most of the zombies to come to the window, making them a lot easier to kill. And let's just say, I'm really, really glad I did that. After killing that wave, I noticed that I was starting to get queasy. This is because I was spending a lot of time around the zombie bodies. So, with a mixture of that and my guy feeling tired, I decided it was time for a well-deserved rest. I woke at midnight to a gunshot and decided that I wanted to go outside to check it out. Now once I was outside, for whatever reason, I decided to let out a shout, and a mixture of this and a perfectly placed tree led to another close call. As you can probably tell, I was very panicked while I was fumbling around with my keys and menus, but we made it out of that one, I won't lie. I won't lie, that one got the heart rate up a bit. I don't know why, but I decided to jump into the window of this house, and once I was inside, I found something that was pretty a pretty decent find. It was a police zombie. Now, the police zombie didn't just provide me with, you know, a, a chance at a gun. It gave me a much better melee weapon, which was a nightstick, which is a, <laughs> it's a pretty big upgrade from the rolling pin that we've been using this entire time. And also, it gave me a bulletproof vest to give me better bite protection, and a shotgun with six shells in it, which I could use to attract more zombies because, you know, I wasn't going to be using that to take down holds anytime soon. A bit of time had passed and there wasn't really very much that happened, so I decided it was time to get more zombies into the area. One of the things that I so desperately wanted to get my hands on was an axe because the trees on the corners just take up so much of your vision and it doesn't make sense because it's not as if it's a huge bushy tree, it's just a, a small garden tree that you can't see past. So I was wanting to find those desperately and, as luck would have it, one of the zombies had one in his back. I dispatched the rest of the zombies and you already know that I got to work straight away taking down that tree. I wasted no time doing that, that thing had got on my nerves for the last time. Something I started doing was walking in a straight line across the back of these houses. The reason I chose the back is because the kitchens were at the back so I could jump through the window and get food or maybe get some melee weapons. But the further I went along, the, I noticed a row of open garages that I could use to get supplies. I could use it to get, you know, things like screws, nails, pieces of metal. I could even use it to get some tools like saws and hammers. Or even better melee weapons such as machetes, crowbars, all of, all of that kind of stuff. So I thought that these would definitely be worth looting. By the time I got to the garages, unfortunately I had run out of time. So I decided to head back and uh, yeah, I think that by now you probably know what's coming next. After killing that wave of zombies, I decided to head straight over to the garages to see what was inside. Now what I found inside was a box of nails, a hammer, some duct tape and also some wood glue. 
but most importantly we found a machete. The machete was going to be important because I was going to be able to use that to sharpen planks to make spears, which were going to be my primary weapon. Coming back to the house, I started to take inventory of the tools and the melee weapons and things that we had just because I, I wanted to see where we, where we were at and to be honest we actually started to get a decent inventory worth of stuff. As I said before, spears were going to end up being our primary weapon. Spears are great, but the problem with them is the durability. You, they're really, really good at killing zombies, and you can one-hit zombies often, but the durability on them is really bad, so at max you're going to be killing three full zombies per spear, so you're going to need a lot of wood. Honestly, by this point, I don't think I need to explain what's about to happen. While dealing with the zombies, I got one of the luckiest zombie spawns that I could possibly ask for in this playthrough because finding a backpack was going to be pretty difficult, so finding a prisoner zombie that always spawns with a duffel bag was golden. I decided to head home and dry my hand up cooking some soup. I had some beef and then I put some beans in and then before I knew it, I had some good soup. Good soup. After my soup, I went straight to bed. Okay, I want to run you through the plan real quick, right? So we started in this house here. I am... Um, now here at the edge of this house. I'm going to jump this fence and the reason I'm going to jump this fence is because I want to head to this building right here. This is a school building with a huge swimming pool inside it and if you didn't know you can actually fish in these swimming pools so if we can take over this building you know make it safe maybe we even move in I don't know but all I do know is that if we were to get control of this we would be eating like kings until the day that we die. So Let's see how that planned out, eh? If you're somehow still watching this and you're enjoying it, then please make sure to leave a like. And um, also, make sure to follow me on Twitch. This is where all of this gameplay is recorded. It's all played live on my Twitch, so go over there and let me follow. Anyway, back to the video. I hopped the fence and I was actually really glad to see no zombies on the other side because my worst nightmare is jumping over the fence and getting grabbed. So, you know, jumping into the unknown could be a wee bit scary. But yeah, we jumped the fence, didn't see any zombies and we decided to venture out to see what we could see. Remember what I was saying about jumping the fence and getting grabbed? <laughs> well, anyway, there was too many zombies there. We had to jump the fence and come back over and try again sometime later. I think me jumping the fence and making a lot of noise outside dragged a lot of the zombies out of the buildings. And then they eventually, you know, came to, came to eat me. So we go home and we try again tomorrow. After going home and getting something to eat, and also making more spears, I decided it was time to come back. I gave the zombies a chance to move out of the area overnight, and hopefully it was a lot easier for me to actually get in here and not get so overwhelmed. Now, going through here, it was actually pretty exciting. It was exciting to finally be able to move into some uncharted territories and you know, see different parts of the map. So, I started to clear the zombies in the hopes of getting closer to the school. But, as this clip shows, this was going to be no simple task. We were going to need a lot of spears and a lot of days to clear these zombies. Or, did I have another plan? Now, I won't lie. As you can probably tell from the corpses on the floor, I spent the last couple of days killing a massive amount of zombies. But, it just didn't feel like I was getting anywhere. So, I had to come up with a plan. How am I going to get rid of a lot of zombies, easily, attracting them to my position, without me needing to kill them? Which is where it all started to go wrong. You see, one of the easiest ways to kill zombies in Project Zomboid without putting very much effort in, is a Molotov. 
one of these bad boys. Now, of course, Molotovs are great, but they are also very dangerous. I think that you know where this is going. I'm not going to tell you. You are going to need to stay to the end of the video, but just know it doesn't plan out how you think it's going to plan out. So we've been over Molotovs. Easy way to kill zombies, right? Killing zombies whilst you're in a car with a Molotov, even better. However, there is an issue with that. The issue is that we are limited in tiles, so we can't move very far, meaning we can't really drive a car around. But what I can do is I can get in a car and park it next to one of the cars in the car park, leaving all of the zombies to, you know, herd around the car, catch each other on fire, they all die, I walk in, start fishing. Sounds great. Sounds great. So this is the first breakthrough that we get, right? We find a car with a key in it. Now, I don't know if you remember from earlier on in the video, but we did find that car with a gas can in the back. And there is also another car in this car park with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of gas. But that's all we need. We only need a tiny bit of gas because we're just going to park it from one space to the next space. And that's all we're going to need. So I head back and I get the gas can. Gas can acquired. It's party time. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go down here. I'm ready to burn some zombies and I'm ready to get fishing. I can't wait. I'm excited. But then disaster strikes. As I was on my way to the car, for whatever reason, there wasn't a meta event or anything like that. Just a mass horde migration. And I'm just going to let this play out. Ten days. Five hundred and fifty three zombie kills. That is a bitter pill to swallow. I would like to explain to you what happened though. So the mod's a little bit janky, right? And I noticed this a couple of times whilst I was playing. And I just want to quickly explain what happened there. As I'm walking backwards, I get caught on something. I don't know what it is, but it's something. The only way that I could explain it whilst I was live is imagine you're standing inside a circle and you're trying to move to a square. There's a dead zone between the corner of a circle, or so the, the corner of a square to the edge of a circle, right? There's a dead zone and you get caught in that dead zone. So it's not moving from a square to a square because you would just transition over there's a dead zone because it's moving from a circle to a square it's the only it's the only sense that i can make of it and i hope that this um clears that up and kind of proves my point as to how that actually happens but anyway i hope that you did enjoy this video it was a lot of fun to do it on stream it was an interesting challenge and uh yeah it was a lot of fun to make as well and if you like this video please leave a like if you want to see more then make sure to subscribe Leave a comment letting me know what you thought. And yeah, follow me on Twitch and I will see you in the next video.